The plans of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. You see, the plan of God, my friend, is that perfect, straight-cut, narrow path for you. It is justified as already righteous. It's already established in the book of life, in the scriptures, in the Bible for you, what God has enrolled and enlisted and planned out, a destiny, a plan. We read that in Jeremiah chapters 29, verse 11, where he says, even last week, Monday, we were reading that, for I know the plans that I have for you. And we understand in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 5 that the plans of the righteous are just. What is righteous? Who is righteous? Those who live by the word of God. How do I know what he expects, what he wants? I read from his word, from the Bible. And I understand that his plan is just. It is already, uh, it is already um, examined as righteous. And so it is just. But I also understand the, that the advice of the wicked is deceitful. You see, when you take counsel and advice from those who do not follow the will of God, what happens? Trickery is in play. Manipulation, deceit, uh, snares, traps. And so I don't want to take advice, according to the book of Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 5, I don't want to take advice from the wicked because their advice is deceitful. My friends, you need to trust in the word of God for we understand today as we continue that the plan of God is against the plan of my enemies. And an enemy can simply be those that you do not see in the natural, even in the spirit, there are, there are voices that speak to people, evil spirits, that are against the plan of God for your life. You don't want to follow that trace. You don't want to follow the advice of the wicked. Let's go to another psalm. We did this last week, Monday, and we're doing this again. We want to read a psalm like a prayer against the plan of our enemies. We'll see where the psalm addresses these things in detail. We understood clearly in Psalm 140, exactly how dangerous the tongue of the wicked can be against me against you and we saw where the psalmist said that god will deal with them and serve them with the same uh, wickedness the same words that cut like arrows that, that are like fiery darts god will serve it back to them it also said that their, their tongues are like a venom and, and viper like a serpent like a serpent so we want to look at Psalms, chapter, Psalm chapter 64 today and verses 1 to 8. Let's go there quickly because I have a Bible story to share with you and about two verses that goes to get, together with the word this evening. Let's look at 64. Hear me, O God, as I voice my complaint. So we are reading the Psalm as a prayer. We are also learning in it what the wicked is capable of and we're going to see where god will cut down the works of our enemies that that they are trying to foil against us he's going to confuse that plan i came to pray on top of you also that the plan every enemy listen to me today every enemy that is foiling a plan against you to destroy your life to bring you down to bring down your family to mash up your home to mash up your house i came to declare on assignment by way of the anointing that the voice of god himself shall cut asunder what they are has established and built against you his voice his words will bring it down and we're going to do that within the reading of the word hear me O oh god as i voice my complaint protect my life from the threat of the enemy i declare right now that you are protected from every threat of the enemy that which you know of and that which you do not know of god will shield you he will shield you hallelujah he will shield you with his word he will shield you with his promises he will shield you with his plan you will not be bitten by that viper you will not be you will not be taken down by that enemy verse 2 hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked they conspire against you they are actually holding meetings against you what is happening here we are reading the psalm and understanding the works of the wicked the works of your enemies that are against you you know very well you understand very well in your life that where you would have had an enemy time and again whether it be in the workplace the company your own boss whether it be in your own house the members of your own household in the new testament talk about that that the enemies can be the members of your own household and so i came here to let you know that the word of truth shall serve as a prayer and shall cut aside not to say that we are literally attacking that person no i mentioned to you already and i'm mentioning again that people are like instruments to be used 
either you decide to be used of God when the day reaches or you decide to make yourself an instrument for Satan to use. And so the body is embodied also in the realm of the spirit for demons to enter. So we want to understand clearly that we want to rid of ourselves of wicked works and wicked acts. If you're looking at me today and I caught you just on time and you are in anger and strife and you are planning to destroy your neighbor, you need to stop because right now you are being an enemy to that person. God does not want that for you. He does not want you to live that way. Amen. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked. My prayer is that you will be hidden when they decide to conspire. They decide to conspire against you. The Lord will shield you from that and hide you from that noisy crowd of evil doers. I declare in and about and upon your life uh, that those who are speaking against you, the words shall become, and the statements and the accusation, the judgment and condemnation shall become as though noise. What happened in the noisiness of a crowd? People cannot determine accurately and understand what they are saying. And so it will be that your enemies who are speaking against you, it will be as though as noise. No one will be able to understand what they are saying. This is what I pray over you right now. Verse 3, they sharpen their tongues. Psalm 140 told us last week that their tongues are like snake and like, like a, a poisonous snake. Um, they, they hissing and the venom. Now it's saying, now it's describing the enemy's tongue as a sharpened sword. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim their words like deadly arrows. You see, my friends, what I understand in this lifetime is the speech of others can actually assign death to your life. Come on now. But I'm not here to, to frighten you out of your clothing. No, the speech from your enemies can actually assign death to your life. Somebody, someone can actually set you up to be in prison. Someone can actually set you up to be fired. All of those is death. You will be in lack unless someone can actually set you up to try to destroy your marriage. And I'm here today to put a stop to that, to put an end to the plan of your enemies that is going against the plan of God for your life. That's what I'm here. I'm here ready now by way of the anointing to cut down the assumption of your enemies, to cut down the plan of your enemies. They sharpen their, their tongues like swords. So the words of the wicked that are against you, the words of, of the enemies, of your enemies that are planning against you, their plans and their conspiracy are like, like not a sword. And, and aim their words like deadly arrows. They actually aim it at you to pierce you and kill you. Verse 4, they shoot from ambush. But look at this, at the innocent man. They are actually planning to ambush those who are serving God, those who are innocent. Come on now, look at this. Verse 5, they encourage each other in evil plans. You see, I want some people to understand that if the wicked can encourage each other to plan against you, a divisive plan, an evil plan. How much more, it came to my mind, should the righteous, excuse, how much more should the righteous encourage each other to do well to others, to do good? This is what we must understand. We must encourage ourselves to do good. Look at this. They encourage each other in evil plans. They talk about hiding their snares. What are, what are they doing? Snares are like traps. They are planning to hide those traps so that you don't see so that you don't see and that you fall in it they say who will see them verse 6 they plot injustice and say we have devised a perfect plan and so your enemies at this point i came on assignment to let you know they are thinking that aha uh -huh, now we are going to catch this one now we are going to catch you catch that one now we are going to catch you and bring you down for, for good and god has sent me to let you know that the very setup that they have set it shall trap them instead. Look, I'm seeing it here now. They plot injustice and say, we have devised a perfect plan. Surely the mind and heart of man are cunning. Cunning like a snake also. Verse 7, but God will shoot them down. And this is your prayer. This is what God sent me to let you know. The good news of the gospel. God will shoot them down with arrows. Now remember, the word is not really necessarily to be taken literally here. Amen. We are speaking spiritually and by way of revelation and parabolistically, God will shoot them down with arrows, with his fire. May the fire of God quench the fiery darts of your enemies. That's what I pray upon you, like arrows shooting back. Suddenly, God will do it. They will be struck down. You see, your enemies are planning against you to suddenly 
bring you down to nothing and to strike you down. But because of the plan of God that is upon your life, God is going to turn it around and strike them down. Suddenly, the plan of God will stand on top the plan of your enemies and crush it and destroy it. He shall crush the head of the serpent concerning you today, beloved. Receive this word. But God will shoot them down with arrows. Suddenly they will be struck down. He will turn their own tongues against them and bring them to ruin their very own words. You can know, Psalm 140 told us that last week along that same line. That whatever they are planning will be turned against them. Whatever they say is, is as though those words are going to fire back. And it will reverse and come back on them and bring them to ruin. All who see them will shake their heads in scorn. Let's move along now. Amen. You want to write this down. Let's move along. We want to look at Jeremiah chapters 18 and verse 18. Look at this carefully what happened to Jeremiah. Now this is a story in the Old Testament we are bringing out. That little dear, I want to show you. They said, and this would have been Jeremiah's enemies at the time. We're talking about, for those of you who don't know, the plan of God for your life, which is against the plan of your enemies. It's, it's, so we're weighing the two. The plan of God against the plan of your enemies. Which one is going to stand? And I came to orchestrate and direct by the teaching and preaching of this word that the plan of God shall rise up in your life and the plans of your enemies in this season in this time, in this moment, shall all fall to the ground, come to, to naught, and fail. Don't worry about those who are maliciously, maliciously speaking against you. Don't worry about those who are planning with action to take you down. God has sent me on assignment that you know they will not succeed. They will fail. Their plans, that they have, that foiling plan that, that is falling against you shall come to nothing. Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 18. They said, Come, let's make plans against Jeremiah. And we all know that Jeremiah is a great prophet in the Old Testament. You see, remember very well, we understand that people don't like the prophets, right? And Jeremiah was that prophet who would only prophesy a lot of wrath. So nobody appreciated him, really. For the teaching of the law, for the teaching of the law, and I want to open your eyes to something, by the priests will not cease nor will counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophets. So come. So now they are looking at Jeremiah and they're saying we have to destroy him. And they, they imply three things to go together with Jeremiah. Look at this. The teaching of the law by the priests, the, the counsel from the wise, and the word from the prophets. What does this have to do with Jeremiah? It's all intertwined. So come, let's attack him with our tongues. Look at this. Have you been noticing that we have been examining the danger and the power of the tongue use of your enemies? I came to cut some tongues in the realm of the spirit. I came to tie some tongues in the realm, realm of the spirit. I came to shut up the mouths of your enemies that is speaking against you. Because as they speak, you are being held back. And the Lord has shown me to let you know that I must put a stop to them now in the realm of the spirit. Because as their mouths are being shut up, I'm seeing you moving forward. You see, that's prophetically now. As your enemies are speaking over you and speaking on top of you, speaking behind your back, speaking against you, you are being held down, kept back. It may have even cost you some years. But I came by way of the fire of the Holy Ghost and by way of the anointing to create a separation now. I declare that every tongue that is speaking against you must be tied now. I now cut out in the realm of the Spirit every tongue that is speaking evil and uttering evil against you in the name of Jesus. Every tongue that is opposing you in the realm of the Spirit, be it by man, woman, child, or evil spirits, must shut up now. I shut the mouths of your enemies concerning you today. Now, the teaching of the law is, what does that mean when they mention the teaching of the law by, given by the priest? Is right from wrong. The priests, those who lead and shepherd over you and teach you. So the, Jeremiah's enemies wanted to put a stop to, to all of this, what is right from wrong. You see, your, you see, the enemies of God does not like to live by what is right from wrong. They put everything together and they call it grace. <laughs> and they say, that's love. Don't emphasize on the wrong, no. 
You see, are you being an enemy of the cross today? And I need to address some people because this is a serious eye opener. I need to address some people. The, the scripture is saying here that it shall never cease. The, these three things, the teaching of the law, which is right from wrong. The, your, leaders, your leaders teach you that, the priests. Number two, counsel from the wise is advised through the wisdom of God. They didn't want the counsel of the wise. They didn't want the wisdom of the God. Of God, sorry, the word from the prophets, the voice of God speaking His word. What is the word of the prophets? All that is already established in the Bible, in the old and the new, and what is spoken over you today. That's the word from the prophets. They didn't want to hear that, and that's why they didn't like Jeremiah. And they wanted to conspire against him, and they said, "What? They said, what? Let's attack him with our tongues." You see. The wicked planned against you. This is what God has sent me to let you know. And attack you with their tongues. They have no respect for what you say. You see, Jeremiah was a prophet of God. Many of you are looking at me today and you are led by God. You are a leader. You are teaching and preaching, whatever the case may be. And they do not respect a word that you have to say. They don't even respect you. That's the wicked. That is your enemies and what they are doing. They are attacking you with their tongue and God has sent me to let you know that he is cutting them down now amen so you you want to understand let's let's you want to understand that a stop is being put to the voices and the tongues and the arguments and the contentions and the conspiracy and the, the plans of your enemies for the plan of God is rising high now above it all and shutting them up putting them down destroying the plan of the devil concerning your life. I destroy the plan of the, de the devil concerning your life today. Let's look at a story because we are coming close to an end now. I have to I have to close off here now. <laughs> Amen. Acts chapters 27 verse 42 to 44. The soldiers plan to kill the prisoners. Now this is another story we are seeing now in the New Testament what happened to Paul. The soldiers plan to kill the prisoners to present any prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping, but the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. That's the, the centurion is the one higher over all the soldiers. He ordered those who call, could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land in safety. I came to let you know that the ship that you are in in your life today that is sinking, that is falling apart, and the enemies are in the same ship with you, God is going to cause the one who is over your enemies to, to, uh, to block your enemies from killing you. Because of you, because of Paul, the rest of this prisoner's life was saved. Because of you today, prophetically, I'm saying because the word of God is upon you and there is a destiny, destiny you're, you're like a, an apostle, just like Paul, God has sent me to let you know because the centurion, which is on the enemy side, wants to spare your life, all else, this is prophetic now, the life of others that are around you, those prisoners, those people that are with you, their lives will be spared because of your life, because the plan of God is upon your life. And because his plan cannot be snuffed out, it cannot be diverted, it cannot be reversed. Everyone else that is around you shall be saved. The man who is over your enemies, who are planning to kill you, he will have mercy on you and set you free. Be that one godly person that will cause all the prisoners to be saved through the sake of of your life example your enemies will be kept from carrying all their evil plan because of god's plan for your life even if you cannot swim even if you cannot swim out of your situation god has sent me to let you know the same broken vessel the same boat that they were in the ship that broken and fall because of the sandbar they hit a sandbar and it crashed and opened are you experiencing a sandbar that you have hit in your life and your ship, your whole house and family seems to be sinking, falling apart. The, the, the very pieces will save you and you will swim to shore in safety. Your enemies will not have the last say. God's plan is going to come into play in your life. Be blessed with this word, share it with someone. Listen to it again. Amen. The word of God is with you. The plan of God is established in your life. And no other plan the devil has tried to exalt shall be established. It shall be cut down and it shall be broken down 
In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare, be blessed until we meet again.